The pressure is on a now silent Attorney General Merrick Garland to give a solid reason for the raid. The Wall Street Journal editorial board warning the FBI search on Trump suggests that Garland may be committed to pursuing and indicting the former president. And if so, he is taking the country, country on a perilous road. Meanwhile, we are learning more about exactly what went down during that unprecedented raid. There are reports that agents ransacked Trump's personal office for hours. Mm. They broke into his safe, and they even went through Melania Trump's wardrobe. An attorney for the former president says his legal team wasn't even allowed to watch as agents searched his estate. But when it was all over, the feds reportedly seized about a dozen boxes on Monday. And some of the items recovered in the first batch from earlier this year reportedly included letters from Kim Jong-un, the North Korean leader, and former President Obama as well. A cocktail napkin was included in a birthday dinner menu. And moments ago, reporters pressed President Biden to comment on the raid. The details, Kennedy, get worse and worse. The agents were apparently there from 9 a.m. to 6.30. 9 a.m. to 6.30. That is nine and a half hours as they're scouring through Melania's closet, breaking open safes. Apparently, the attorneys were not just not allowed in. They were told to turn off security cameras, which they did not do. Good mm -hmm. move. Uh, there was a rider truck on the scene. Apparently, the DOJ lawyers, according to Trump representatives, were very rude, and they kept saying over and over again, we have full access to everything. We can go anywhere. Uh, it feels like the full power of the federal government raining down on a political enemy. Yeah, I would like to see. I know Kevin Walling in the previous hour talked about wanting to see the search warrant. I would love to see the search warrant. I would love to see what they got. I want to see who signed off on this. I want to. I want to see who knew about this, including the president. And uh, I, I want to know if there were any careful discussions that were had about how horrible this looks. What an incredible overreach this is. Uh, it is. It appears to be a horrific violation. You know, if you're going after things like cocktail, cocktail napkins <laughs> and birthday party menus, and, and you are breaching the home of a former president of the United States, uh, we are in a very, very bad place as a country, and there is way too much power concentrated in the hands of the FBI and the DOJ. Mm. And it, it, guess what? You have activated bo voters. You, you have not necessarily done the work of tarnishing a president for good who might be a future president. And uh, there, there will be hell to pay if we don't get answers very, very soon. Right. And silence isn't working. Um, mm. Biden being asked about this and not answering. They say the White House didn't know. It's hard to believe. They say the president didn't know. Ari Fleischer had an important reminder, Raymond. Um, I want to put this up. I talked about this from the podium uh, during my tenure. According to FBI notes, Biden himself in an Oval Office meeting on January 5th, 2017, so before Trump took office, he was with President Obama. Deputy Attorney General Sally Yates brought up the Logan Act in an apparent suggestion to Yates that Flynn could be prosecuted. Maybe Biden didn't know about this warrant, but Biden has a history of publicly telling DOJ what to prosecute, as he did in 2021, when he said anyone who didn't co cooperate with the January 6th committee should be prosecuted. The point is this. He's vice president then. Mm -hmm. He's in the Oval Office. Out of nowhere, he says, let's use this 1799 statute, which has never act. been used to prosecute anyone successfully, to go after an incoming Trump right. personnel. He has a history that should be looked mm. at, that should be scrutinized, and it is fair to ask him questions now, given that. Well, look, look, it's a very dangerous game that they're playing here. The FBI was already tarnished after the Russia collusion nightmare that they foisted on the entire country and the way that happened. So now, from the people who brought your Russia collusion, home invasion, the presidential edition. This is terrible for the republic because what you're doing is setting up a, a pattern of political recriminations. And there is no doubt when the, you hear the Republicans now saying, we're going to investigate this one and we're going to investigate that one and Garland, uh, maintain your records. I get why they're, they're feeling that way. 
But the path we're down, mm. politicizing these arms of the federal government meant to enforce the law, it's a very dangerous place. And I worry about the republic. This is a Pandora's box yeah. that they have opened. And, and God, God help us, I don't know how we're going to close it. Me neither. And President Biden, he said this two hours ago. It really stood out to me. Take a listen. Mm. We're always being told that Democrats and Republicans can't work together. When I ran, I said one of the reasons I was running, one of the three reasons was to unite the country, and I was roundly criticized for being naive. That was the old days, Joe. You used to be able to do that. Well, guess what? I don't believe it. We never have failed to. i got to say, Cheryl, I've never felt more united than the day after a former president, political opponent, and probable future opponent to President Biden's home is raided. I've never felt more united, yeah. President Biden. I, I'll tell you, and this is all going to backfire, but you mentioned that Wall Street Journal op-ed, the editorial board. You know what else they said? And this is what drove this home for me, and this, this characterizes how I feel. Mr. Trump is accused of violating political norms, sometimes fairly, sometimes not. The left then violates norms in response. Mm -hmm. Polarization increases public faith in institutions, and the peaceful settlement of political difference erodes further. This will backfire on them. In my opinion, what were they looking for? They weren't looking for things for a museum, for the National Archives. They're looking for something to pin him when it comes to January 6th. This is obvious. No, we have not seen the warrant, to your point. I want to see it as well, but give me a break. We know what they were looking for. And I obviously would love to be in Melania's closet, too. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that moment was probably wasted on those FBI agents. But beside that, I'm just as furious as all of you are about this, and I think that what you were going to do, look, if he didn't, if, if there was some doubt in, in Donald Trump's mind that he was going to run again, and, and I've heard that he definitely wants to run again, if there was any doubt, this galvanizes him and many, many others to go in his camp and, to, and for him to try and take mm -hmm. down Joe Biden. But the legal side of this, and we're missing Emily today, is that if they find something, they could indeed take him out of the running in 2024. I think that that is a possible, possible motive here yeah. as well. This isn't about the National Archives. This is about January 6th and stopping him from 2024. Well, Corrine Jean-Pierre was asked about that, and Kat, um, the press secretary, I'm sure, eased all of our worries. Let's watch. <laughs> is this administration weaponizing the Justice Department and the FBI against political opponents? Peter, the president believes in the rule of law. The president believes in the independence of the D Department that's, of Justice. Yes or no? Just no, that is House. no. It's a yes or a no for you. I'm answering the question. You may not like it, but I'm answering the question. Mm -hmm. So not a no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I can't really be surprised by that sort of answer, right? If you don't have to answer it, you can get away with an answer like that, why would you? But I think it's difficult the longer this goes on, knowing so little about it. As narratives start to form on both sides, people on the right get more upset that this happened. People on the left get more excited that this happened without any of us really knowing very much about it at all. Uh, and I think regardless, I think all of us should be concerned about the power that our federal law Law enforcement agencies have. I mean, us libertarians have been concerned about it long before this was even a dream or a whisper of something happening. So I hope that no matter what happens, that's something that everybody's continue to be concerned about and take a look at. That's such a great point. Yeah. If they can do this to a sitting president, that's never, or, sorry, a former president, if they can do this to a former president, what can they do to you with 87,000 new IRS I have, agents? Uh, I have a, just a little bit fewer resources than, than the <laughs> Trump <laughs> and, it, and this may have been a political play to drag Trump into the arena before the midterms. Remember, he wasn't going to announce, and he may not announce yet. But this puts him front and center and makes him an object they can run against. And perhaps that was their silly, I think, political uh, approach. And remember, they seized Republican Congressman Scott Perry's phone yesterday. Right. So they just don't give a flying flip about how politicized they look, uh, which is terrifying. Or the rule of law. Of the it's like government. a Gestapo. Yeah, it feels that way. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.